welcome to the latest part in my series, Journey to Marvel's Infinity War. Each week in 2018, I'm re-reviewing one movie in the MCU in release order leading up to Avengers Infinity War. Today, we have made it to the start of phase three with Captain America Civil War. Now, this is a movie that a lot of people absolutely love for good reason, that you got some great tension in there, all these characters coming together, that amazing airport sequence. So today, we're gonna have a lot of fun talking about a movie with some incredible elements to it. Now, if you don't know how this works, the way it's going to work is I'm going to do a review of the movie, as you would normally expect. I'm going to talk about the good, the mixed stuff, and the bad stuff, and then I'm actually going to share the MCU connections, kind of the way it ties to the other movies, how all this stuff fits together. Hopefully in the comment section you can tell me some of your different takes on the way all this fits together, and then I'm going to share some of you guys' takes on this movie using the Stardust app. So, there you go. That's where we're going to head on with all this stuff. Like I said, tell me down in the comment section, what do you think about Captain America? Civil War, and be sure to tell me those MCU connections as you think about them, especially if I miss any important ones. With that said, let's get started talking about the good. For me, what I love about this movie is that of all the movies in the MCU, this one probably for me has the best sense of actual true conflict. While there is a bad guy with a scheme and a plan in it, at the core of even his scheme and plan working is the simple fact that our heroes have true conflict, where Two good guys have opposing views as to how they should move forward. They have the same facts and they have different strategies for how that should move forward. They have different value sets. They have different things where they've been hurt. They have different relationships that uh, they value so much that they were willing to sacrifice to hold those relationships together. And because of that, there's true tension. Not manufactured, not we need a crazy guy trying to do something insane, but related to two people we understand where they're coming from, two people we're rooting for, no one's truly in the wrong and no one's fully in the right, real conflict. And that's what I just absolutely love about this movie. From the very opening of the film where you have this action sequence where they're trying to stop bad guys from doing evil stuff and Wanda takes an explosion trying to save people, and Captain America in particular throws an explosion into the sky and that has a side effect where was about 30 people died, a bunch of Wakandans in the mix. Things like that, where you see that and you go, yeah, that's a real tension that happens if you're trying to stop bad guys, collateral da damage happens. And when collateral damage happens, people say, hey, we don't want you to do that. That's real tension. You can just feel one action has a consequence that sets up the next thing that's going to happen. And this inciting incident puts us in this adventure where we look at the worldviews of our two main heroes here in Iron Man and Captain America. Iron Man is you know, Tony Stark, who's impulsive who has a history of making really bad choices. He is personally responsible for Ultron. He knows that he can't be trusted and needs oversight. So when all of this goes down and the government says, we need to put accords in place, you need oversight, as a guy that knows his past, he immediately goes, I probably do need oversight. Contrast that with Captain America as a guy that saw World War II and an evil government, what they tried to do. Move forward and you get to even the first Avengers movie and the government wants to nuke New York City. They're trying to save the day and the government wants to nuke New York City. You move along to Captain America the Winter Soldier where we discover government, evil. Uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., evil. He sees all of this and he trusts himself. He knows I'm trying to do the best I can in war. There's consequences. It's horrible what happened in this incident. But governments, you just, I do not trust a government to have oversight over what we're trying to do. We need to be able to save people when things happen. And you see those two worldviews and they both make sense. There's a way in which you can interpret both from their perspective and you go, that absolutely makes sense where they're coming from. Now, yesterday over on my YouTube channel, they got some new features where I'm able to put polls up and ask you guys questions. I pulled you guys and asked you who you thought, or which team are you on, Team Captain or Team Tony Stark? I got over 11,000 responses. Here's what you guys said. 53% Captain America. 42% Iron Man and Zemo got 6%. We got 11,000 votes on that. Well, that's awesome. I had been doing Twitter polls and get like 50 votes, 11,000 votes. So this one's actually 
a formal scientific poll. No, it's not. It's just a YouTube poll. But so naturally in Captain America's movie, he did come out ahead, but not by as much as you would think. I Tell me where I'm coming from. I am definitely Team Captain America, especially as you watch the movie, the way things play out. And the fact that the spokesperson for um, Team Iron Man from the government side that's trying to put these accords in place, or Iron Man's the spokesperson for Team Iron Man, but the spokesperson for the government that's trying to put the accords on them is General Ross uh, from <laughs> The Incredible Hulk, the guy that's kind of responsible for abomination. Not a good guy. Not exactly the guy that I want having um, the you know finger on the button to send out the Avengers. I don't trust that guy. I trust Steve Rogers a lot more. I even trust crazy Tony Stark over him. Anyway, that's for me what makes this movie so powerful is that there's actual conflict, tension, worldviews, true drama to it. And uh, as I've said elsewhere in some of my other ranking videos in such, there's a way in which you could take Zemo out of this and this conflict still remains. And we're, we'll talk about that later in this video and I'll expand on that thought. But you also look at the relationship of, of it, of Captain America and his devotion to Bucky, his lifelong friend that he trusts. He knows there's a good in there and the evil that happened was because he was brainwashed. It wasn't his fault. He has a loyalty there. You look over on the side with Iron Man where the, you talk about the fact that he, he's gone through a breakup recently. So he's got stress on him. He himself is very much feeling the tension of he's responsible for Ultron. And what we know from the first Avengers movie is that he himself very much feels the weight of the atrocities that they have to see and that weighs heavily on him. All of this sets the stage for their different reactions to everything that happens inside of this movie. From there, we move on to the simple fact, the amazing ensemble of characters that they balance in this movie. Now, absolutely, Captain America is our star. Absolutely, our side character is Iron Man. He's our number two guy, uh, kind of as an antagonist inside of the film that's not really a villain, just an antagonist to our protagonist and these two very strong personalities inside of it. And from there, they find a way to incorporate all these characters that makes sense. Like, you know, when you, 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 they established all the way back into Ant-Man, a little way, how do we get Ant-Man into this movie? He forms a relationship with Falcon. That makes a lot of sense. You go through the whole array of our Avengers and how they kind of work into it. All of it makes sense. Why is Thor not here? Because he had his a bathtub adventure in Age of Ultron, and now he's going through the universe. Likewise, Hulk flew out into space. Like, we have understand why everyone's showing up. That big question that uh, sometimes people throw into the MCU, like, why didn't, uh... You know, why didn't Iron Man and Iron Man 3 ask the Avengers for help? This movie, it does that. They all kind of show up for the adventure, plus some new faces thrown into the mix, and all of it coming together at that amazing airport sequence where it, it makes sense what we're seeing, that they're not trying to kill each other, they're just trying to stop each other, there's a tension, they don't want them to get on the ship, but we don't want to ruin everything, and so you get an amazing, big, gigantic action sequence while not needing a bunch of different people to die in it, but at the same time, when you play dangerous games where you're shooting rays at each other and there's explosions everywhere, someone's gonna get hurt, and the guy that gets hurt in this particular one is War Machine as he falls from the sky, and the reason that this action sequence is so uh, is such so memorable isn't just all these characters, but the Russos have done an amazing job in this movie as well as Winter Soldier of capturing amazing action, just having great action sequences in filming it in a way that's exciting and gets you in on the action wide shots so you can see Captain America throwing these cool kicks and Black Panther flipping all around and punching people, capturing the way, you know, Spider-Man spinning around gigantic Ant-Man's legs and he flies around him to trip him. And it's done in a way you feel all of it and it get excited by it. It's not just chop the pieces or anything like that. And it's thinking through what are all the fun things that you can do if you've got an Ant-Man that you can shrink down small and put him on arrows and things like that. If you've got uh, a guy, that uh, several different people that can fly around and you got Spider-Man, what would be fun to do with all of that? And they capture it on screen. So it becomes that dream come true that fans have always wanted to see. And, and it's in a franchise where we've had several of these already where it's been like, oh, the Avengers, that was amazing. We finally got to see this on screen. 
Age of Ultron, even again, we get to see it again. And they found once again to up the level, take it to that next level and do something different with what they're trying to do. From the action and from this amazing cast of characters who do a fantastic job, from the tension, let's move on to the fact that it's a movie that, that explores kind of themes that actions have consequences, that standing up for what you believe matters and it can cost you things. It's exploring uh, ideas in it and it has a much more serious tone than most of the MCU has been recently, especially the 2017 movies, which were just so joke, 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 joke. You look at Civil War, it's fun. It has jokes in it, absolutely it does. But at the core of it, it's a movie that's a lot more serious because it is tackling Heavy themes, consequences, death, and because of that, it, it feels a little bit, a lot more grown up than a lot of the other films in the MCU. And finally, to contrast this one with Age of Ultron, I feel that this movie did what Age of Ultron struggled to do, which is tackle a bunch of storylines with a bunch of characters, except with clarity. You can follow what's happening throughout the entire film, even though a lot of different moving parts are happening involving so many different characters. And we're introducing Black Panther into the mix and the whole idea of Wakanda. And we've got accords going on. At the same time, we've got this new mysterious character that's manipulating things behind the scenes. And we've got Captain America trying to rescue Bucky. And we're learning this whole backstory about additional Winter Soldiers going on. And we're learning all about how things have tied into uh, Tony Stark's parents' death. and. So many elements are going on, but you can follow it piece to piece, understand what's happening throughout the entire film. And that all goes back to the Russos of just doing a great job with the storytelling and giving us all the information that we need without ever giving it, feeling like they're talk, dumbing it down, talk, treating us like we're stupid. No, it just gives us just the right information as we go through this adventure to be able to have a great time. And they do a great job of juggling all these characters. So you feel like every single adventure gets some moment to shine, some scene, even some of them are only in the movie just a little bit and they still get to shine. And so you feel like Black Panther's a standout in the movie, even though, you know, he's, he's you know, B-level character in this movie, but he's so important at the same time. Spider-Man's only in the movie for two scenes in the movie plus a post credit sequence, but still felt like he stole the show at times. Ant-Man's only in the airport sequence, but had, was so fun and so funny. Everyone gets their chance. Even uh, Hawkeye, his kind of taking things and um, getting to kind of talk down to Tony Stark after he's arrested. They just found so many little windows. Let everybody shine. Tell a story that's compelling with true dramatic tension throughout it where you understand where different people are coming from. You understand the stakes feel real in this. And maybe that's what I'll close out on the positives of this one, is that for a long time when I watched this one, I had been a little bit frustrated that, oh, it's Civil War, someone someone needed to die. Something more needed to happen in this story to, to take it to that next level, to kind of raise it up in the quality. And just as I was thinking about that, rewatching, I was like, no, if you take this movie on its own standards, not, not my expectations going into it, uh, not based off knowledge of the comics and that Captain America died and things. If I take all that out and I just watch it on its own terms, it has serious stakes. And the stakes are the Avengers themselves as a team. This team that we've been watching build for over 10 movies gets torn apart because of their past, because of actual differences amongst them. The events of this movie and really the events of the previous movie have led to them falling apart and their alliance not working, and some of them becoming criminals, some of them becoming traitors to their friends, and that's real stakes, that's real consequence, that's not minor stuff, that's not, it's, it's, it's different, it's not someone died, a nation was destroyed, but it truly is stakes consequence, and it's finding a way to do big storytelling without needing to blow up a city, without needing to threaten the earth or the universe. You can do it in a ways that are personal, where you feel the pain of friends, uh, friendships ending, and that's what this movie did so well. From there, let's move on to the mixed aspects of this film. Now, the big one that comes to mind on me on this one is Zemo, our main villain. About a month ago, I put out a villain where I ranked the villains and I had Zemo not in the top 10 and a bunch of people kind of were like, what are you crazy? Zemo's one of the best guys. His plan worked and absolutely defending him. And so I've been reevaluating, watch this movie specifically with him in mind. And I, I, next time I rank the villains, I definitely will move him up. 
But here's why he's mixed for me. On the positives, a different type of villain with a motivation that you understand. You understand why this guy would say, I need to break them apart. What they're doing is evil. This is a bad thing. And why this guy would be driven mad by the tragedy that happened to him. And then you've got a guy that he's a he's not the guy that's punching Captain America in the face. He's the mastermind working the pieces to try and make his plan happen. So different type of villain, motivation we understand. He's got a master plan. And then as the movie plays out, he succeeds. He does exactly what he's trying to do, and he tears apart the Avengers. So a lot of those, I look at all that and I go, that's awesome. That's Those are the good elements of this character. But the problem I have is that the reason that his plan works is because that the pieces were already in place. That already all the events of previous movies where they'd blown cities to pieces and the Avengers trying to save the world, that already still happened. That... Iron Man caused Ultron, that already happened, that Steve Rogers has seen evil governments, that's already in place, that Bucky had killed Steve's, uh, st- st- uh, Tony's parents, that had already happened, that Captain America hadn't told him. All of these things that led to the conflict where our good guys had done bad things or our good guys hadn't told certain things or they had different values, all of that was already in place. The dominoes are just set in place already. And so Zemo's role is just to push them over. And you can tell, because they tried to work in uh, Black Panther and Wakanda and all of it, there's some elements to it that he was important for some of these other kind of side plot lines to it. But of our main storyline, the actual civil war, the pieces were in place. This conflict could happen anyway. And because I, I can't give Zemo full credit, it's like he had this master plan that tore, tore them apart. No, they were on the verge of being torn apart no matter what. There was tension already before he even works into the plot of the movie. And so for those reasons, I, I, I can't give him full credit as the guy that tore the Avengers apart. No, they tore themselves apart. He was just the one that did that little final push. The other thing is we talk about his master plan came together and worked. But, and I think I'll use this to transition into the bad. So talking about the bad, Zemo's master plan is very contrived screenwriter type plan. And what I mean by that is it so relies on people doing exactly specific things at exact times. For his plan to work, the right people have to capture Bucky and he has to be imprisoned at just the right place and no one has to recognize this doctor person comes in as a different person. And uh, all these little ingredients have to fall together perfectly for things to happen. And then there has to be, you know, a battle at an airport where they're trying to battle one another. And um, it just happens to be that Captain America is the one that gets to escape, makes it out of it and gets to fly out there. And Iron Man just has to be get certain information to decide that he's going to try and make up friends with his buddy and like just all the different pieces for the climax to happen for Zemo to like you know push play on the VCR and be like see look uh even details like how does Zemo know that Captain America hasn't told Tony about some of this stuff that that you just kind of go This is a screenwriter master plan. This isn't a thing that would work in the real world by any stretch of the imagination. And and granted, uh, there aren't flying people. There aren't infinity stones. uh, There's certain contrivances of uh, these types of movies that you just have to accept. But when you make a master plan and it's just, it worked because it has to work for the movie to move forward. At a certain point in time, that starts to take you out of the movie, especially rewatching the movie over the a couple days ago. That's the big thing that kind of popped to me was this plan has so many things that rely exactly on two people traveling from around the world arriving at the exact same time from two different points. It just it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't work like that. It just it came together because it has to come together. And when you have such great tension established through just the world they've created apart from Zemo's plan. The best thing about the movie to me, like I said repeatedly, is that actual worldview conflict by putting Zemo into the mix and having this master plan where everything comes together and they show up at Winter Soldier Base and he goes, aha, I'll play a videotape for you and then you'll beat the crap out of each other. That specific way that worked out 
is kind of the weakest element of the entire film for me and not, knocks it down a little bit to me. And I, and I, I wonder if there's if what I what a version of this movie would look like without Zemo, if that would be better, or if it just if they could have done just a little bit more tweaking on it. So his plan wasn't so, uh, um, you know, him having to be a fortune teller to make this master plan. I don't know. But that's really the only negative to me is just how contrived that master plan of Zemo was. All in all, this is a movie that has dramatic tension to it, amazing character moments, funny moments, fun movie, balances all these storylines so well where you absolutely know what's going on. And the only problem is what to do with the Zemo character and his master plan that didn't fully work for me overall. But this is a very solid film that's incredibly entertaining. I would give this one a solid A. And on the entertainment level, I would probably go with a 9 out of 10 on this one for me. It's because it's not quite as fun as some of the other ones. It's not one I rewatch as much, but it's a very well-made movie that's very close to being a perfect comic book movie. It's just for that some of that plot stuff had been tightened up just a little bit more in there. So that's where I kind of fall on this one. Once again, tell me down below in the comment section. How about you? I, most people love this one, but it's got a faction of people that really don't like this one. And a lot of people love it, but they still think Winter Soldier is better than this one. I I'm more of, I like this one over Winter Soldier personally. Um, but anyway, those are my take uh, on this one. From there, let's move on to our MCU connections. As always with the MCU connections, I'm doing my best to list as many as I can uh, with a movie like this. There's too many for me to possibly be able to catch all of them. Tell me your favorites down below. If you catch a great one that I missed, I'll pin it up at the top so everyone can see the thing that I missed that you caught. With that said, let's get started. First thing that I caught in this one, it, it clarifies that this movie takes place eight years after Iron Man 1, just to kind of give a t time frame for the MCU. These All the movies up to this point in time take place over eight years. The movie kicks off with the Winter Soldier in assassination mode, and we learn a really important detail. Winter Soldier assassinated Tony's parents. That kind of ties into some things a little bit. We get this big, gigantic opening sequence where we see that Scarlet Witch, War Machine, and Falcon have definitely joined the Avengers, and they are off doing adventure-type things with them. In our little adventure, Crossbones from Frank Grillo from Winter Soldier, he returns as full-blown Crossbones in a costume, and we kind of see what ends up happening to him. And then through that happening, through him trying to blow himself up, Scarlet Witch throws something up into the air, blows up a building, and 11 Wakandans are killed in the process. And this kind of draws the Wakandans out of their isolation. We get to meet our king of Wakanda through the process of all of this. We learn the Secretary of State is Thunderbolt Ross from The Incredible Hulk. This is really, really important because it absolutely ties the Incredible Hulk into the MCU. Even... Going through all these this series of videos, even doing all my rankings, every single time I talk about The Incredible Hulk, people go, is that one even in the MCU? Yes, it's in the MCU. Whether you don't like it, whether you hate that movie, whether you feel it's totally different, it's wrong, you don't like the Ed Norton deal, it's in the MCU. Uh, it's always been in the MCU. This movie ties it back in definitively, and we learned that Thunderbolt Ross has had an opinion on the Avengers all along, as we would imagine that he would. And through that, he's the guy that's like, you guys need to be put in check. We can't have this happening anymore. Moving on from there, Peggy Carter dies. So we have her funeral, and we get the reveal there that uh, was it Sarah Carter from across the hall. She is her niece, and so there's a big reveal in all of that that uh, information in the bombing on the Vienna Accords, T'Chaka is killed, and this means T'Challa moves up to be the king of Wakanda. This uh, becomes, obviously, um, the setup for Black Panther, the movie, as we just found out a month ago. That movie continue is a direct sequel follow-up to the events of this film. It comes out right afterwards. Some very important information in all of that. In this movie, we discover that Tony and Pepper have broken up. They're taking a break. And in his explanation of what happened, we actually get some really important information about why Tony Stark's still Iron Man. Uh, coming out of Iron Man 3, he blows up all of his suits and he's like, I'm done. And then Age of Ultron happened and he wasn't done. And so in this one, it kind of explains that and it ties it together in a way that makes sense of, yeah, I was supposed to quit. I was supposed to be done. And then I wasn't. And I just kept going. And that 
eventually had consequences. And so this movie essentially fixes some of the discrepancies in a lot of that. In this movie, we get the mid credit scene from uh, Ant-Man. It, like, it actually has that sequence in this movie with Captain America and Cap Falcon talking and Falcon goes, I know a guy. And so then that appears in this movie. From there, we move on to the airport sequence, which just is an MCU connection. When you connect all the characters in one gigantic battle sequence, they're connecting them all together. And so in that, we get our first taste of Spider-Man in this uh, in the MCU and all sorts of other fun things happening in this. A vision uh, shoots a blast, takes out War Machine on accident. So then he is seriously injured by the end of this movie. As the movie continues on to our climax, the Avengers are totally torn to pieces. Some of them are arrested. Tony and Steve are not very happy with one another. Half of our Avengers all are on the run from the law after um, you know all the events of this movie and Steve breaking people out of prison and things like that. So people on the run. So an enormous number of really big, important things happen in this movie with big, gigantic consequences for the MCU. And then in our post credit sequence, we see that Bucky is in Wakanda, where Captain America and T'Challa have kind of made up. They've made friends. They're trying to do things right. And this sets the stage for what appears to be a lot of the stuff that's going to happen in Infinity War, um, based off the trailers for that one. Anyway, those are a bunch of the ones that I caught. How about you tell me down below in the comment section, what did I miss? With that said, here's what some of you guys had to say about the movie over on the Stardust app. Captain America Civil War is, if not the best, one of the best MCU movies. This is my favorite movie of the MCU. It is still one of my favorite movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, my favorite MCU movie. This is probably my all-time favorite. Probably my favorite in the MCU. Uh, the fighting fight scenes in this movie are amazing with the airport scene. It's one of the coolest fights we've ever seen in the MCU. Okay, I really like this one. The fight scenes in it are great especially the airport fight scene. All the heroes fight me, I just absolutely love this movie. This movie pits all the Avengers against each other. Good backstory on Bucky and the agents of Hydra. Best thing about Civil War, introduction of Spider-Man, introduction of Black Panther in this world, and the really awesome motorcycle move that Bucky does right at the beginning during the chase scene. I like that we see all this tension that has built up over the Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron between Tony and Steve. We see what it's led to. What I love is that both sides are sort of a gray area. You'll flip-flop between which side is right or which one's wrong because they offer valid points. Huh? It's probably the best structure film from all MCU. Uh, it made me go from Team Cap to Team Iron Man and right back to Team Cap. Both leads were right. Uh, it was all around a pretty good movie, but not great. Uh, it might as well just be called Avengers Civil War. I felt like there needed to be more possible death to make it seem urgent enough, although not that I would have wanted any of those characters to die, but it felt kind of anticlimactic. The directing is really, really good. The characters and themes really portray their attitudes and the different ways that the situations come together. It's just so, so brilliant. This really just is a great movie to me. You know, the plot, the action, everything about this movie is just handled perfectly. Everything going on in the movie just makes sense. So there you have it. This is one of those movies that gets a lot of love from a lot of people. But if you want to appear in one of my future videos, it's really very simple. All you have to do is download the Stardust app for your smartphone. It's totally free. You can get it at that link down below. Once you download the app, follow my account first. You can see my name down below. It's Sean Chandler, quite simple. So follow me first, and then whatever movie you want me to see your reaction to, record a reaction using the app. You just select the movie. It's super duper simple to do. Record the reaction with your phone. You don't need anything fancy equipment or anything like that. It's only 30 seconds long. And then tag me in it. Just use, click this button up in the right-hand corner, type my name, Sean Chandler, into it. It'll show up in my little notifications deal. I'll see that you wanted me to include your video in a future reaction, and I will see it. Couple tips on this one. Make sure the audio is good and clear so I can hear you talk loud, don't have noise in the background and ideally I really want to see your face in the video so if you're hiding and you're mumbling into it it's just not usable footage so just a couple of tips on how to do that I'd love to see your face in startup have your take on stuff and include it in a future video with that 
said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We're gonna come back next week with another one. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. Key thing is, I don't wanna just talk about movies. I wanna talk about movies with you. So please join me down in the comment section. Let's have a lively discussion. Also, share those reactions over on Stardust. Share them my way, or send your reactions over to me. Tag me in so I can see all that fun stuff. And as always, thank you for watching.